week, we're looking nationally at an update on last week's major story on a lawsuit being brought against social media giant Facebook. Several investors are suing in what's being called a data harvesting scandal. Two out of three of those candidates will be moving forward to the municipal elections coming up on November 5th. A teacher from the Kane School has been placed on paid administrative leave following serious allegations. Local Congresswoman Lori Trahan and Virginia Congressman Bobby Scott made a quick stop in Marlboro. The pair took time to speak with local union representatives. We're here in downtown Marlboro in front of number 70 West Main Street where all units have been called to a fire that has shut down West Main completely. $1 million, that's how much money the state has been ordered to pay a Framingham resident after he served time in prison for a crime he says he didn't commit. And if you're looking to make any major purchases but also want to save a few bucks, you might want to wait for a few weeks. Massachusetts House voted on Tuesday to establish August 11th and 12th as sales tax free weekend. Our top story this week means great news for the city. Marlboro recently received a $2.7 million grant. As police are still looking for the suspect, we did speak with one officer who, while he was very tight-lipped about the situation as the investigation is still ongoing, did confirm that they are still looking for the shooter. Earlier this week, I sat down with Congresswoman Lori Trahan to catch up on her first few weeks in office. Let's take a look. How are things different for you now in D.C.? You said earlier you were spending three weeks there, one yeah. week here. How are things different? It's been a little bit of a whirlwind. Well, it was a rough one for the Patriots on Sunday versus the Dolphins. Mm -hmm. And Matt Passaccio is also here to talk about that. Where did that nickname Sweet Feet come from? Uh, it came from my high school creative writing teacher. And I saw those kids out there banging on the glass. They were so excited to see you guys. Do you remember, you know, what it was like for you playing hockey growing up in Charlestown? Where did you play? I grew up, um, I was always around the child sound ring. See, when I'm bowling, it always goes one of two ways. It's either I'm a fantastic bowler or I'm an awful bowler. I'm just an awful bowler. <laughs> And our top story this week, a 23-year-old man is facing a long list of charges after damaging nearly 40 cars in a vandalism spree. Police arrested Adriel A.J. Serrano for causing thousands in damage to 38 cars earlier this week, including one in the Marlboro Police parking lot. Serrano was found blocking a road with a cone and carrying a three-foot piece of wood, which police say he used to hit cars, breaking their taillights, windshields, keying them, and slashing tires. The motive is still unclear. One million dollars, that's how much money the state has been ordered to pay a Framingham resident after he served time in prison for a crime he says he didn't commit. Kevin O'Loughlin was accused in 1982 of kidnapping and sexually assaulting an 11-year-old girl at knife point and says Framingham police withheld evidence that would have proved his innocence. O'Loughlin sued the state, the town, and several police officers and has asked that his record be expunged and sealed. Marlboro police are urging residents to stay alert after a man was reported last week for flagging down cars in the middle of traffic to ask for a ride and money. Around 2.30 a.m. last week, a local resident reported when he slowed down to avoid hitting the man in the middle of the road. He grabbed onto his car trying to get in. Marlboro police have issued the following statement saying people asking for money do have the right to peacefully do so. However, in no way are they to disrupt traffic or create any hazards in the roadway. They will not harass, intimidate or otherwise accost any persons in the process. If someone is to encounter a person asking for money in this type of manner, please contact the local police department immediately. Coming up after the break, Paws in the Park held its annual fundraiser. We'll show you all the details from that event, and WMCT's Matt Passaccio will bring you up to date with this week's sports highlights.